yes as soon as I get it played. Okay. Wait, can I take it to my room? Yes, please take it to your room. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry for the technical difficulties. We are a little late, but um, we are here with Brandy Voigt Fox, and we are in the kitchen of the same kitchen we were in last night, which is super exciting. So you can uh, tune in here. This is Food and Art from Our Table to Yours, the digital dinner party night two, which is really exciting. So if you are excited, let us know in the chat that you're happy to be here. Uh, we are pumped to continue figuring out how this new technology works. Um, Brandy, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I am Brandy Voigt Fox. Um, I was actually privileged to be one of the founding members of Friday Arts Project. Uh, my main role in the early days was calling everybody because I was the only one who believed in mornings. Um, and now I get to be on staff with them, uh, along with Chris. We're the, the co-campus directors, I guess is our title. Um, and artistically, I'm primarily a photographer, um, but I really love bookbinding and playing around with whatever my newest obsession is. So today we are going to be making vegetarian black bean burgers. Um, and uh, be on staff with them. I love this recipe because it's a little bit of a pirate's code recipe and you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Um, and those are mostly the only recipes I use because I don't like following recipes very well. Um, but we're gonna start with this also. This is the key to the recipe for me. And if you don't have a food processor and you want to make it, I suspect most of it could be adapted to like a hand mixer or if you're really desperate, a potato masher. Um, but since I've had the food processor for longer than I've had the recipe, I've never tried it with either of those things. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna do is take a medium onion and you will cut it. Uh, you don't have to be very fussy about the cutting because you're gonna just dump it in the food processor, which is one of the things that I love about it. So you just wanna make it small enough that it's not gonna upset your food processor. Um, I'm really prone to just taking this whole outer layer off, throwing it in the compost bin so that I don't have to get little pieces of onion skin involved in the process. What's really cool about Brandy's cooking, I am a big fan of it and often a member around the table at the Fox's house. All of Brandy's recipes are very like friendly, pantry friendly, I would say. And so what's super cool is that these recipes are adaptable and adjustable and she's going to add some stuff, I think, to the agenda tonight, which is really exciting. <laughs> now you can hear from the ASMR of the food processor. Um, as somebody who is a lifelong hater of chopping onions, um, in fact, that's always the first task that I give to somebody who's in the kitchen. They're like, how can I help? Well, here's some things that need to be chopped. Um, I love that I don't have to do that here. So once you get your onion in there and chopped, um, you just add in all of the other ingredients except for the flour. So since these are bean burgers, the next obvious ingredient is beans. If you are in the practice of cooking beans from scratch, I commend you. Um, I used to do that and then time was less on my side. So now I just use canned beans. Uh, but the wonderful people at America's Test Kitchen actually did some testing and found that um, canned beans can sometimes end up being a better flavor experience. So who am I to argue with America's Test Kitchen? <laughs> uh, the next thing you'll want to add is your seasoning. The recipe calls for a tablespoon of chili, but really any seasoning will do. Um, tonight, I'm actually going to try 
this amazing burger grill seasoning, which I've never tried before, so it could be terrible. Last time I made them, I got a little overzealous in the seasoning, and so I put a tablespoon of chili and a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, and it had a great flavor, but when my two-year-old took a bite, he started crying, so we're going to ease back. But, you know, you know your taste buds. You know how much you and your family can handle. If it's too spicy, add rich. You know, my solution. <laughs> that's awesome. And I think that's the best solution to anything is to add ranch. Uh, if you <laughs> want to know what the ingredients list is that Brandy is using tonight, those are all posted on our social medias down if you scroll onto the Friday Arts Project Facebook page or on Instagram at Friday Arts Project. You can see a little cute recipe card that our designer, Sarah Kennedy Irwin, designed. It gives you kind of um, all the step-by-step -step ingredients or shopping list that you would need for this recipe. Um, so one of the off-book moments I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just throw some ketchup in there. It's probably going to be close to a quarter cup. Um, I'm not measuring. Ketchup is a giant pain to measure. Um, oh, sorry. It's also rude. Um, I had a friend once say that adding a little ketchup to any sort of like stew recipe can do a lot to blend the favorite flavors because it's got vinegar and sugar and then the tomato paste, which all gives it sort of an umami experience. Um, I mean, Alton Brown calls it the mother sauce of America. So <laughs> uh, I've got the egg, the ketchup, the chili, the beans and the onion in here. I'm gonna pulse it a little bit and then I'm gonna add the flour components. So what's the ideal kind of pulsed mixture we want right now? Like what made you stop um, pulsing? Oh, it, I just wanted it incorporated. Um, probably you could wait till the end and after the onion, obviously, um, and just do it one time, but it just makes me feel good to pulse the food processor. Um, What's so funny, I'm just gonna interject a little bit. What's so funny is that Brandy is a lady and has a food processor. Meanwhile, I'm over here with my like bag salad kit being like, I'm ready for dinner. This is a good night. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a half a cup of the rolled oats. Um, if you don't have oatmeal on hand, any grain will do. Uh, I think, I've never actually tried it with flour and flour is a little more funny about this. And then half a cup of the corn flour. And tell us a little bit more about the purpose of multiple flour usage. Um, I mean, different flours are going to bring different things to the table, both in form, the form of texture and flavor, um, nutrition. Uh, the other reason, hold on, I'm going to pause the light bulbs. Um, the other reason that I want to be in the practice of using multiple flowers is because then it's easier to be flexible when you can't find what you want. Okay, so this is kind of the consistency that we've got right now. It's a little floppy. It's not very attractive, but this is something that we make for taste, not for looks. Um, I'm going to put a little more corn flour in there. Um, you can kind of do what you want. Sometimes I'll add more eggs. Sometimes I'll add cheese. Um, if you wanted to make this vegan, um, or that any kind of binder that you would normally use in vegan, ba vegan baking would work. Um, but that is kind of outside of my domain of expertise. Okay, so this is what we got. Kind of, you know, nice and sloppy. And how, I'm how heavy is it though? Let's like, what's the poundage? I'm, I'm not sure how to guesstimate the poundage. <laughs> the gloop, I'm just curious about the gloop. Like as a performance artist, I'm like, let me bathe in that gloop of beans. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it would be rather like a thick oatmeal <laughs> with better smells, I think. Um, yeah, let so us know in the comments if you love or hate oatmeal. I think that's like a big uh, morning controversy that I love to start. Like, let's wreak havoc on the breakfast scene and be like, do you love or do you hate oatmeal? Um, so now I'm just scooping it. Oh, this seasoning smells really good. It kind of 
They must have some sort of fake smoke in it because it smells nice and smoky. Um, I would also cool. like to know, is it like a refried bean texture? Yes, yes. It is a very refried bean texture. And the reality is, is that anything is gonna be okay, um, but the thicker it is, the easier it is to form within reason. If you go too far, then it's not gonna stay together. Um, so I'm gonna take we're, this bowl. We're, sort of going, we're moving towards a, a burger is, I don't know if everyone caught that. Sorry, we had technical difficulties at the beginning. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you all for who are watching. We had a moment of stress, but um, this is Brandy Voight Fox. If you missed it, she's a staff member, most, most famously working on Winthrop University's campus, an incredible bookbinder and photographer. I'm Denise Young, another staff member. I do performance things. This is all irrelevant because she's holding the beans in her hand and she's waiting to talk so she can show them to you. So here they are, the beans. Um, so at this point, you can either kind of shape them into your patties and you could dump, dump them straight in the fryer. Um, I'm gonna chill it because I think that they hold up their shape better if they're chilled first. Sometimes I shape them before I chill them. That's not happening today. Um, so I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge and work on the next part of dinner. Again, if you have any questions while this recipe is unfolding, um, I can multitask so I can see what's happening on Facebook. And we have a sweet Facebook wizard uh, behind, the screen at another house. I um, am tuning in from the Fred Harris Project Studio, which all of the money that is being raised this week helps us stay here in the Vegas Art Center. And the foxes, which if you were here last night, you saw them in their kitchen. Chris was making empanadas and um, they're all the way from Hemlock Ave here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And then the Irwins are at the perch, masterminding um, the behind the scenes of the Facebook situation even though I flubbed everybody up by putting it somewhere where it didn't belong but you know here we go we're all here we're all in this together in the famous words of Zac Efron so okay so the next thing that I'm gonna make um is some homemade cornbread what I love about the bean recipe is it actually is fine with a whole host of things and depending on how you season it you can put it with anything I imagine that it would make some interesting fake meatballs. Um, but I've never tried that because I like this combination the best. Um, but tonight we're gonna make um, a cornbread that I've made for a long time. Um, and while it waits, so I've got the oven preheated. Is it 400 degrees? And I have a cast iron skillet preheating with the oven. Um, I think any, oh, I lied, I don't. I had to put it back in. I'm so glad I started talking about that. Um, the cast iron skillet was holding the eggs that I needed. It's very courteous. Anyway, so I think it's always a good idea to preheat your cast iron if you're baking with it. it gives everything just a really nice crust. It's quite delectable. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else has been picking up or dusting off their cooking skills now that we all are self-isolating and our only restaurants are our living rooms, but I watched a tasty video about cast irons, even though I didn't know, I don't own one. I just for probably like 20 minutes, watched them season it and use it because I was like, this is all, this is really important stuff to know in a, in a, in a global pandemic. So did you, so what's your seasoning process or your cleaning process of your cast iron be? Um, so I am shamefully haphazard uh, because I know cast iron can take a beating and you can fix a lot of things that you've ruined. Um, and usually I just ship them off to my dad when they've gotten too far gone and he seasons them for me. <laughs> but as far as general maintenance goes, um, I like to use Alton Brown's method of um, using oil and salt and you just kind of use that to score it with and then you can kind of rinse it off and set it in the, um, kind of set the oil in the oven. Um, my dad's process changes every couple of years. Um, which I think, you know, adds to the fun. Uh, so like most quick breads, if you've got more than one wet ingredient and more than one dry ingredient, you're gonna wanna mix them separately before you start mixing them together. So this one calls for two cups of buttermilk. Oh, this bowl is not big enough. That's going to be exciting. Um, cool. And two eggs, which I will initially whisk, whisk in my 
good grief, in my measuring cup. Um, 4 p.m. talking gets a little bit difficult. Good. And it, it's harder when it's not in person. I think that it's easier to multitask the talking, doing, when you're physically with the people that you're talking to. At yes, apparently so. also back to the, we got some word in that it's a false controversy, the oatmeal controversy. And Joe Schley says he eats oatmeal every day and lives and breathes by it. <laughs> um, so in the big bowl, you'll want one cup of all-purpose flour. And I just keep my measuring cup in my flour box and on the list of things I'm haphazard about, measuring flour is one of them. I think if I, ooh, if I did more particular baking, if it stopped coming out okay, I would maybe start measuring more, but it always tastes fine. So I just don't feel like it's incentive to be more particular. So we have one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of corn flour. Um, one of my sweet uncles would be rolling in his grave to know that I was using a corn flour that wasn't ad lib, but you know, you do what you gotta do. Um, then we get two tablespoons of sugar, which that is one of the other controversies is, are you supposed to add sugar to your cornbread? I was always taught that you weren't, as an adult, I think it tastes better this way. So that's how I do it. That's awesome. Also, you have a comment in the Facebook chat that says, can you cook the bean burgers on a grill? Uh, I have never tried it. Um, I would be interested to know if anyone does try it. My concern, maybe if you use like one of those little veggie baskets or something, um, I would just be concerned that it would maybe crumble into it. Cause I'm, I'm gonna fry them in oil, just pan fry them, um, which kind of gives it the crisp that I enjoy. But I'd say, you know, try it and see. If you're really invested in the answer, reach out to me later and I'll look in the cookbook that I got the recipe from originally. It's a Mark Bittman cookbook. And he is really good about giving a lot of alternatives and different ideas. So he might have that answer in a um, month. That's a question from Emily Doling. So she definitely has your number and knows your address. So she'll come shake it down. She will. Wear a mask, people. If you're going to shake people down. <laughs> update on the technical difficulties. If you are tuning in anywhere else um, on Facebook, if you want to be involved in the conversation, I think the best way to come on to it is from Denisa Young's personal page. I know that's so confusing. I'm so sorry. Somehow we couldn't get it casted onto our Friday Arch Project page. But if you come over to this um, thing over here on my page, you can be live in the conversation with all the other people who are watching. I think we have a couple tentacles who are watching from different places. So all of you, we're glad you're here. If you can hear me, we're super happy <laughs> you're here. Also, please, yeah, react to with the little emojis down at the bottom. And hopefully, if you are commenting, I will get to your questions um, from all the different streams and I will stop interrupting Brandy with all of my technical qualms. No, it's good. It gives me a chance to double check the recipe and make sure I haven't forgotten anything because that sometimes happens. Um, so I've got all of my dry ingredients, which were a cup of all purpose flour, cup of cornmeal, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon each of baking soda, baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. And then now I'm just gonna pour in my wet ingredients, which is two cups of buttermilk and two eggs whisked together. Um, and you're gonna have a very wet batter-like dough, um, not dissimilar to say pancakes. Um, and as an aside, if you ever wanna make something that calls for buttermilk and you don't keep buttermilk on your hand, on your hand, on hand. I keep buttermilk on my hand at all times, just off the back. Uh, so it slides down my to my elbow, and then it's convenient for uh, drinking purposes. I mean, I feel like it's good for your skin, probably. 
and drinking buttermilk was a great uh, health practice of days gone by. My <laughs> great grandmother used to swear by it. Brandy Nobody is a true uh, phenomenon for days that have gone by. Uh, she <laughs> loved that pastime. Uh, I like reading about it. I actually don't want to live in the past time. Now is a good time for living. Um, so, oh, but yes, if you don't have buttermilk on hand, just add some lemon juice or vinegar to milk and let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. And that'll fix the acidity. It's not exactly the same, but it'll do in a pinch for the chemistry. So here we go. Here's this nice batter-like situation happening. So the oven is not all the way done preheating uh, to 400, but the cast iron is in there. Grabbing butter. And obviously, when you grab something out of a 400 degree oven, don't be silly. Um, so it calls for about three tablespoons of butter melted in. Um, because this part isn't affecting the chemistry at all, I just eyeball it, dump it. So again, if you missed the beginning part of this live stream, welcome. The best part about Brandy is she is a chef and cook that adapts things to her kitchen and maybe sometimes to her mood, which is the best to feel like you're eating food from a sheer place of joy and beauty. She's swishing around butter in the cast iron right now. Yeah, uh, mostly just to get it melted. Um, so all of the surfaces are coated. They're still kind of a big chunk. So I'm just gonna stick it back in the oven for just a second or two. So you don't want the, the butter to start to brown. There are times where brown butter is a gift to your taste buds, but you should do that on purpose, not an accident. Um, yeah, any uh, weigh in on the pro anti sugar in cornbread? Or is this also a fault controversy here? Yeah, so for, we're on to controversy number two, which is do you put sugar in cornbread? You can let us know in the comments on the right on Facebook Live uh, if you are hay or nay to sugar in the bread. We have a great recipe. Um, if you haven't heard um, about what's going on here <laughs> or how you clicked over here, some of you might have joined just for fun. But this is Food and Arts from Our Table to Yours, a Friday Arts Project fundraiser. And one of the ways that we're raising funds for our studio, as Brandy continues to aggressively swirl, uh, <laughs> butter. please say something so they can see you swirling. Uh, I'm, I'm swirling the butter, apparently aggressively. I mean, just, I mean, just, just patient. I just felt like the camera wasn't on you and you were just like going at it really strong. And it was like this great moment we had between us. Anyway, this is the Food and Art fundraiser cookbook. And it has around you know, over 30 recipes, oh, well over 30 um, pieces of art. And uh, just in, sorry, in my earpiece, is that we only have eight left. <laughs> eight left. It's incredible. So I have like 1,200 streaming uh, capacities coming at me right now, and things are flashing. And Sam is editing me in front of a bowl of controversial oatmeal, which is amazing. Um, so, yes. And Maddie, Garden is here, which is super exciting. Brandy, I thought you would be happy to know that. I know Joy is also watching. We have people in from around the globe, which is dope. Hope Curran is here from Paris again, which is exciting. But anyway, I'm so distracted. This cookbook, there's eight left. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's the first time we've ever printed a cookbook. It's very beautiful, very well designed and edited by our staff. Sarah Kennedy Irwin did a great job. If anyone give, wants to give her some digital claps, um, she deserves all of them. Now back to you, Brandy. <laughs> so the aggressive swirling uh, both strengthened my biceps and effectively melted the butter. Uh, you see that there's, it's coating the edges, but it's also, there's a good bit of liquid. Um, it's actually really satisfying to watch it cool up. I need to get my cameraman to come in here and do a close up while I, while I do the pour. That's yeah, not, behind no, the camera, no. behind the camera we have uh, Chris Fox. I love Brandy and Chris's marriage. They have a very great uh, co-partnership, which is exciting. And oh gosh, I'm gonna let her talk so we can see the pour. Okay, um, so yeah, we just pour it in and hopefully the butter won't make a liar of me, but it kind of like splooshes up over the sides, um, which I find just very satisfying. And I think it's why it tastes so good and it's so bad for you. 
Um, but you see the, but the batter while it was sitting got kind of nice and bubbly because chemistry in baking. Yeah, and so give it a little bit of a smoothing. But you see that butter on the edges? That's how you know it's gonna taste good. Um, and then we just plop it in the oven and wait for 20 minutes and you can go back to where it was. You that, people, that was important. If the butter is puddling at the edges, that means you know it's gonna be good. You heard it here first live on Food and Art. Sorry, I just really feel like this strange mix between like a an announcer for a used car, like a used car salesman meets like a late night Jimmy Fallon meets someone who knows absolutely nothing about what they're doing. <laughs> I got a lot from Chris, which wasn't what happened yesterday. So we're moving. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take the uh, timer is set for 20 minutes. I'll check on it then. Um, usually it's done enough at 20 minutes. You always want to do a two cut check. So I've got my stainless steel skillet out. You could do this on whatever kind of skillet you like to use. Um, this just happens to be my favorite. A friend of mine was upgrading her cookware like years and years ago in college. And um, she was like, oh, I don't want this anymore. I was like, yeah, sure, free, yay. And it has been my favorite ever since. So I've never been more thankful for her decluttering ways. Um, so just put a goodly amount of olive oil in there. Any oil will do. If you want to coordinate your oil with the flavor of your spices, more power to you. Can you tell us a little bit about how this recipe came into your house or to your repertoire? Yes, I would love to. So, um, when Chris and I were, you know, freshly married babies and neither of us knew much about cooking and we would just kind of take turns with the, oh, I did not let that heat up enough. It should sizzle when you put it in. It'll still be fine, but I'm just gonna wait for the rest of them. Um, yeah, so anyway, he was working in a bookstore and he could check out cookbooks and, well, any books. And he happened to check out this cookbook by Mark Pittman and it became my favorite thing. And that's where this recipe was. That was really, I would say the cookbook that taught me a lot about cooking and being fearless in the kitchen uh, because it is structured where um, it's like a recipe with variations. And I, that was the first one that I was like, oh, like recipes don't get the final say. Um, and because it was a vegetarian recipe that my very carnivore meat loving husband enjoyed, because if you were with us last night, you saw that we made beef and bananas, which are mostly beef and cheese wrapped in dough and cooked. They're delicious. Um, but also a good friend and former roommate who hates beans pretty passionately. Um, also oh, loved it. So I was like, well, oh, this is a keeper. So yeah, that's how it came. What happened? You hear the small, tiny voice of my two-year-old who's having technological difficulties as well. I love that. That's a really cool way to inherit a recipe. Also, uh, back to the controversy of cornbread, do you put sugar in it or not? Hot in, a hot take from Emily Doling. The sugar they omit from the cornbread, they add to their sweet tea. 100% think that's true. I would say, <laughs> yes. I think uh, you nailed it, Emily Doling. Uh, you have become tonight's MVP. So Brandy, you added, the cornbread as a side to this, but how do you serve the burger? Like what is the kind of ideal way or uh, the ideal plate with the burger? <laughs> Mostly um, lately, I just serve it on like a bed of greens, usually spinach because it's easy um, and readily available uh, with, or like a kind of light side salad with the cornbread on the side. Uh, we have used it as like actual burger replacement. So on a sandwich and it holds up well there and you just top it however you think a burger should be topped. Cheese, pickles, lettuce, tomato. Um, I, I suspect that this base, um, if you kind of scrambled it, I think it would make actually a really nice taco filling. If you scrambled it and you used appropriate seasoning for it. Um, but again, I've never tried that. This is just, just my suspicion. Nice. 
That's awesome. Um, what do you guys like to put on your burgers? Boxes and or you friends who are watching with us in the comments. I personally, I'll be the first one to answer since there was, you know, half a second of silence. Um, pause there, Chris. Uh, I don't like anything on my burger when it comes to sauce, unless it's aioli or ranch. Brandy, what do you like on a burger? <laughs> I like just about anything on a burger. Um, I really like just about anything in general. Uh, another thing I picked up from Argentina is putting fried eggs on a burger, and that is super delicious as well. Yes. I, I can uh, confirm that that is wonderful. Chris actually has a really great, um, great burger recipe that he'll make when we want meaty burgers, but he should describe it while this sizzles. Well, it's uh, the meat is ground beef and Italian sausage mixed together with uh, Parmesan cheese mixed in. That sounds awesome. Yesterday we did a really great um, magic trick over Zoom. Uh, let me know in the comments if you saw that. Today I'm just eating bread, bread out of a bag that also came from the Fox's house. Uh, one of Brandy's quarantine traditions is making a loaf of homemade soda bread every morning. If you would like to see what that looks like, you can tune in at 5.30 a.m. on Instagram to get the live <laughs> happen while it's happening to you. Uh, Brandy's an early riser, to say the least. Because if you want to get stuff done, you got to wake up before the kids. It's true. My early rising really has a, more to do with valuing daily solitude and knowing that the only way I get daily solitude is if I beat my children to the punch of being awake. I love that, beating your children to the punch. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so what you're witnessing right now is the, the, the reason why we let our oil heat up before we put our stuff in there because it's starting to work, but it's not working as well as hopefully the, first, the latter ones will. But it's, yeah, this is this one's just a disappointment. So we're just gonna put that on the plate um, and move on with the rest of them. Because even Julia Child makes mistakes. So I'm not gonna feel bad because I don't have any. In the words of the infamous poet, Zach Efron, we're all in this together and so, as we flub up and as we, you know, make a burger that isn't hot enough, we're, we're here together, all of us. <laughs> okay, so hopefully now the oil is hot enough, this will work out a little better. There will be more sizzling, more deliciousness. Yeah, this already sounds much better. Do you, would you consider yourself a pretty intuitive cook, Brandy? Um, yes, but only because I'm very comfortable with failing. And so I, it, I don't know if it's intuitive as much as I just don't like the fussiness of figuring it out the right way. So I'll read like 50 recipes and then I won't follow any of them. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it's edible and so, you know, sometimes we just eat something we don't love and we move on with our life. Like the fussiness of figuring it out the right way. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, um, Kirk Irwin, I disagree. Zach Efron is a poet. He wrote those words <laughs> himself. And Sam, yes, we all take all of our life at Lessons from Zach Efron. Finally, Sam, okay, just a little small detour. Sam is here because we met on another digital platform uh, by an artist named Siobhan O'Loughlin, who's a friend of Frederick Project. Um, and he's my quarantine best friend, but I'm moving on now because all of you are good people and we're very glad to be here with you. What I see now is Brandy has a plate and more uh, oil is going into the pan. Maybe, maybe more oil is going to the pan. I'm going to pass this off screen and have somebody else open it because it's a fresh bottle. Um, and I, I can't believe you just said, what is Zach Efron? Use the Google, check out High School Musical 1, 2, and 3, but never 2 because it's the worst one. 
And then if you want more content, you can see High School Musical, the musical, the series. Uh, this is all sponsored by High School Musical, apparently. <laughs> also, hello, people who are just joining in. We're so glad you're here. Um, I'm Denise Young. This is Brandy Fox. We work for Friday Arts Project. And this is night two of food and arts from our table to yours. Also, while Brandy is testing out things and the oil is being opened and we're kind of at a pause, I chose this spot in the studio because one of Brandy's lovely photographs is here right behind me. Um, and I will kind of just zoom in on it. If you want to tell us a little bit about this piece, Brandy, while you're um, moving about in the kitchen, that would be awesome. Yeah, so the piece that's behind Anissa is called Any Fruit Will Do. Um, gosh, I made it maybe three years ago, shortly after we moved into this house. So maybe a little less than three years. Um, uh, in part, honestly, because I was just thinking about the, the plight that my, my single friends have of people just thinking that they just need to be connected to just anybody. Um, and, uh, and just the ways that that, it's just such a bad narrative and a bad story for how relationships are good. Um, so this one is another floopy one, but it's coming along better. But you see this floopiness is actually part of why I would be hesitant to do them on the grill because it's easier to clean up the flooping in a skillet. Um, but yeah, so that kind of, that piece was coming out of that reflection and then um it ended up starting a whole series um that i sort of loosely call my produce tales um and it's just still lives that i do in the studio of produce um kind of standing in for humans um and sort of the things that i think about uh that i see in my friends and in their lives and in my life and um, partly because fruit is cheaper than paying models, um, and partly because most of the time that I do photography is like snapped up in the little odd seconds that that I'm not doing other stuff, and so it's hard to coordinate those odd seconds uh, with another person. But all that it takes to coordinate with the produce is the having purchase of the produce. So anyway. That's awesome. I'm really excited. Uh, Brady and Chris turned their living room into a small gallery at the last Bring Your Own Project Night. Friday Arts Project has moved all of its um, programming online due to social distancing and to keep the people in our community safe. So Brandy hosts as the chair of the Drawing Night Committee, which recently actually over a year ago, started doing Bring Your Own Project Nights. And so just like we would if we were to meet in person, everyone is meeting in their own um, studio spaces over Zoom to make together. And so Brandy and Chris transformed their living room into a sweet gallery space for Brandy's new series that she was working on, which she's very concentrated on the burgers. So I will uh, continue to stay focused on the burgers and not on her amazing art. Um, so I just split them and they're looking good and we've got about six minutes or so on the cornbread. Um, and this is the part where you just sort of wait and either chit chat with whoever happens to be in your kitchen with tonight as y'all or enjoy the silence if you've kicked everybody out of your kitchen. Options really, both of them winning. Lots of great options. Um, Brandy, you're probably happy to not be on the Facebook chat because what's really happening is I started a war about about High School Musical and people are confused and concerned and um, Buzzy thinks that Zac Efron sounds like a spice, which is hilarious, the best <laughs> in my life. Um, yeah, people are talking about how they've seen it, they've never seen it, uh, they don't care about it, they're probably confused while we're talking about it. Uh, just so we all know for sure, Fr uh, Friday Arts Project has never, or oh, well could possibly be sponsored by High School Musical, but currently, is not represented by them. <laughs> oh. Fun fact, I um, only just saw High School Musical this year because of the NIFA. So, you know, that's not the, the most off-topic thing that you could have started a war about in there. 
That's a hundred percent true. I just think that high school musical branded some of the catchphrases in quarantine. Like we're all in this together. So it's hard to not think or talk about it. She's scooping in the last uh, patty, bean patties. <laughs> Is that the right word? <laughs> Yeah, so the last two patties um, are in the skillet. I'm gonna have my faithful cameraman come bring bring the camera closer. Um, so they're here, they're happily sizzling away. These are the done ones. Um, like I said, we don't eat these because they're pretty, but I think that's for real burgers too. They're not the most attractive way to consume meat. Um, but I did try some little snippets from the broken one. And I have to say that uh, burger seasoning is delicious. And so these are not going to disappoint the taste buds. Um, and you can also do these with any kind of beans that you have on hand. I think that black beans just uh, kind of hold the, the meatiness, not actual meatiness, but the kind of, all of the words that I'm thinking of related to meat, like the beefiness. Um, I don't know. They just are more satisfying to me. The beef, the fake beef. Yes, they hold the fake beefiness better. Um, I would say the next closest would be like pinto beans. I tried them with white beans once, and it was just disappointing. I think it would be okay for an Italian dish, maybe, but I didn't love it. So do you feel like you have perfected this recipe over time? I know you said in your promo video that this recipe has been in your life almost as long as your marriage. Yeah, I mean, it's it's strange to talk about perfecting something that like I clearly have flubbed a little on tonight, but I think so. It's, it's a recipe that I know we'll get something tasty out of, kind of no matter what. Um, in the early days of playing with it, I would maybe go a little too crazy in adding extra things. And so they wouldn't hold together. Um, and so now I'm kind of at a point with it where I know enough about what the texture is supposed to be that I feel like we could take it any flavor direction we wanted. But I kind of get a little boring sometimes. And once I find something I like, I don't necessarily feel the need to change it. But I know that's not true of everybody. And part of what's fun about cooking is that you can kind of do it however you want. So if you need a lot of variety, you can have it. If you're pretty happy with consistency, you can have that too. That's awesome. Has anyone made bean burgers before who's watching with us? Um, you can put it in the comments to the right of the Facebook video and let me know if you have had a bean burger before. Are vegetarian burgers normally bean based? I'm pretty carnivorous, so I never know what other things are made of? I think like when I look at the pre-made ones, um, the ones that are kind of like honest about being vegetarian instead of trying to like really imitate meat, um, they seem to be mostly bean or rice. Like I see some grain oriented ones. I'm basing this mostly on again, all, all these vegan frozen bean patties. Well, they're not all beans, but they are mostly. They're just such a good texture and they're cheap. That's awesome. You have some people um, like Aaron who want to come over and eat this recipe with the two of you when this is all over. So you know that the Fox's Kitchen will be up and running for chaotic waffles and dinner parties that are too big for their sweet home. Um, <laughs> I think when I often think of the Foxes, I think of like Joy that's like overflowing. Their house is just like seeping out um community and friendship which is so sweet okay so these are done da, 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 da. How's our what were you about to say i said how's our cornbread doing it according to the timer has about a minute so i'm going to go ahead and get my toothpick ready and take a peek um also give it up for the burgers they look great The burgers look awesome. Okay, so come in here, get the blast of steam. Coming into the oven. Okay, so it's a little more pale than I like, but it's passing the toothpick test. So I'm just gonna 
turn off the oven and turn on the broiler for a few seconds to kind of brown it up. Um, and what did I say? This woman is a lady. She's using the broiler. Let me know in the comments if you're too scared to use the broiler. Like that's my MO in the kitchen is like, I will burn the house to the ground if I use the broiler. This is for Brandy and grandmas only. <laughs> Actually, my favorite um, other chicken recipe cooks them under the broiler and it is so good and it cooks so fast and they're so juicy. Mm. But that is for a different day. Yeah, now the tricky thing about the broiler is you do have to like watch it. Many a thing can go wrong. You're not wrong to be scared. Um, but you know, just don't wander off, which is my grandfather, bless him. He would always, always lecture about like, never ever leave anything on in the kitchen and walk away. And so what did I do my first year living in a house by myself? Well, not by myself. I had four roommates. Um, I was frying empanadas instead of baking them. And I was like heating up cast iron full of oil and I was also watching an ideal husband in the other room so many bad choices so like I walked away while a cast iron a deep cast iron full of oil is heating up oh my, um, that's terrifying uh yeah so I came back and it had a microwave over the stove like this and there were flames up to here and um thankfully oh <laughs> thankfully our fridge was kind of janky and it had like a habitual leak. And so, because nobody likes wet socks, we would just keep, I, um, cause it wasn't our fridge, obviously. We were just renting the place and the owner didn't want to fix it. So we would just keep like a towel wrapped around the bottom of the fridge to keep our socks dry. And so <laughs> I was only one home and so I pick up the towel and I start like smacking at the flames with this damp towel so that it gets like controlled enough that I can grab another cast iron and put it over the top to smother it. And then I went outside and I cried for a little while because it was really stressful. Um, so that kind of turned me off of crying things. No. So pro tip, don't ever use the oven again. <laughs> oh, that was the stove though. That was, okay. that was a stove problem. Oh, sure. So here we go, it's golden. Say that again, um, let, us, let us see it again. Yes. It's nice and golden, um, and it kind of, you, it's probably not perceptible on the camera, but because it had so much butter in it, um, it'll slide around in the pan nice and easy. And so what I like to do, first of all, is to remember which burner is hot so that I don't scorch my hands. Um, sometimes this works, sometimes it flops, but I just like to flip it out onto the plate like so give it up for that flop that was awesome you have this and it's just that is what cornbread should be that crust i don't know if you can see the steam rising off um but this is my cameraman is giving me directions about cornbread placement um yeah so there we have it cornbread and bean patties and that's all I got for you, except I hope to see you again at eight o'clock because Angelo Jeter is going to be performing and he is a wonderful poet. Um, it is always a pleasure to hear his poetry. Uh, you do not want to miss it. So, Wow, give it up for Brandy and her bean burgers and that incredible cast iron skillet um, cornbread. What an incredible night you all got to just be a part of. Uh, Brandy and I cook often, well, Brandy cooks often in her kitchen and I watch and talk. It's the role I play. I cut the onions sometimes too. So I'm grateful that you got to share this experience with the two of us. So in the chat, if you could clap for Brandy or send all the heart emojis to her, we're so happy um, that she's on our team and that she shared her life and story with us and as well as Chris last night. So thank you so much for being here. We are uh, so pumped as we continue to roll out you know, four more days of content, which is the biggest, I think, conference and fundraiser we've ever done. So if you will join us uh, tonight at 8 p.m., like Brandy said, uh, Rock Hill Poet Laureate Angelo Jeter, who's also known as Iambic, will be performing some poetry in our Zoom room tonight. So I dropped the link uh, in the Facebook chat. You can click over there and buy 
Tickets to see Angelo tonight, you can come for as low as $5 and as high as $99. All of the money that's raised this week will help us stay in our studio and continue programming through 2020 and hopefully well into 2021. So thank you so much for being here, Brandy. Thank you again. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you over at the Zoom room. Bye, guys.